guys, welcome back to Southern Iowa. We are actually in Washington, Iowa today. I'll turn so you guys can actually see our face. We're actually at a warehouse. Last time we were in Washington, Iowa, we were on the Barn Talk podcast with This Will Do Farm. We're actually back up here again today. We're gonna hop back on the podcast because one of the things that we both kind of had in our back pocket and we didn't talk about on that podcast was that we were both trying to start different businesses in that upcoming year. We just had never actually, either one of us, uh, had announced it to the public yet. Obviously we did Popo's Pumpkin Patch last year. They started Farmer Grade, which is a direct-to-consumer online meat business from actually other... Uh, YouTube farmers. Yeah, from actually other uh, social media presence farmer... Presences? Presences? Other farmers that have a social media presence <laughs> to actually show you guys how the food's getting brought to you. So we're gonna do a little tour here today with Sawyer, see if we can learn something about farmer grade. My, yeah, I didn't the, think I ordered any pizza. Yeah, you got no. the wrong place. Yeah, we got my dogs barking too. <laughs> Welcome to it. So you guys will recognize Sawyer here. Uh, hey guys. This will do farm. Yep. That's the YouTube channel. Yep. You also have Barn, Barn Talk, Talk Podcast, which believe it or not has some of the most viral videos about me that I've never <laughs> even posted. It's a great podcast. <laughs> and uh, then you also have Farmer Grade, which yep. is where we're at. Do you want to yep. tell us what Farmer Grade is? Yeah, so Farmer Grade is a direct-to-consumer meat business I started last year, focused on the story of the farms that we work with. So it's trying to be 100% transparent from the farm all the way to the consumer's door. So we work with the most well-known livestock farmers in the United States. We got Sunny Farms we're working with, This Will Do Farm, our farm channel. Uh, we got some up upcoming farm partners that are also YouTubers that raise some cattle. And so we kind of help them bring their own product to the marketplace and sell it directly to their audience. And so people are informed on where the hell they're actually, their meat comes from. So. Um, we also do some wholesale stuff too, but we're growing it slowly but surely, but it's been a learning experience, but we're getting there. So outside, I was talking to them the last time we were actually on the podcast. Both of us had talked about the things that we had coming up, and that's why we're revisiting this yeah. here. So we both had some trials and like actually getting the businesses up and going, yeah. which we've talked about on our channel. What are some of the things that were really hard to actually start a direct-to-consumer <sighs> business? Yeah, so I mean, it's been a dream of mine for like three years before I even got this thing going. And getting into the meat business is hard. And I think the, the hardest thing is just getting the USDA processor, then figuring out who's gonna fulfill it. Are you gonna fulfill it yourself? Where's that gonna happen? Can you work with a fulfillment center? And then, you know, actually building out the brand. What does it look like? What's your logo? What's the website gonna look like? Just getting all those things um, squared away is the toughest part. But I mean, there's so many little things that go into it, just like any business. How much dry do you put in a box? What are the shipping rates for each shipping zone? Um, what do you do when people's, people's meat thaws out? What do you do when uh, packages break open? How do you avoid that kind of stuff? I mean, there's, there's little trials and tribulations throughout the whole entire process, but getting started, I think, is just the hardest part because you have to work work with the USDA. You have to get a warehousing license if you're gonna do your own warehousing. You gotta find a warehouse. So that's probably the hardest part, and it takes time. That's why it's take, you know took me two and a half years to just even get it off the ground. So the plan here today is that we're gonna do a little bit of a tour. We're gonna do a fulfillment box, actually. Molly's gonna help out uh, do that and kind of show you guys, if you were to place an, order, or place an order, how your meat would get processed here or packaged here, because who are you using for your processor? So we have a Milo Locker out okay. of Northwest Iowa, yep. up by Des Moines. Yep. So we're hoping to get some more processors as we continue to scale, but they've been awesome. Great family owned American Locker, yep. great people. So. So, so that it's actually processed right off the farm brought here and packaged up to your door. Yep. That's, you're gonna see the, not the butchering part, you're gonna see the packaging to your door part. Yep. All right, you wanna give us a little tour? Yeah, so this is kind of the conference room. This is where we have our coffee. This is where we kind of plan things out and take a breather when we pack orders, you know, get some coffee, get some water. Mom usually brings a crock pot full of something so we can eat lunch. Um, kind of where the brainstorm happened. Got the bathroom here, got two offices behind you that I don't know if you wanna see that, but. That's just kind of some boring office work. This is where a lot of the magic happens. This is our packing room. So when you talk about building up boxes before you, you're gonna ship out, um, when you're talking about 
sealing the product, putting the packaging tape on it and putting the shipping label on it, throwing all the inserts in, tape, boxes, liners, all that is in here. Um, so we got our liners, we got our boxes, we got uh, tape, uh, we got a shipping printer label thing, um, got my computer to help me print the labels off, got a TV so when we're <laughs> doing a lot of boxes we can kind of stay entertained and yeah so this is a lot of where the magic happens for sure. So uh, is this like stuff that you can just like easily find off the internet because Molly Molly likes to do her Hello Fresh's box and it's like that looks very familiar. Is this is so this things that are like easy to find or they, is this challenging to get sourced? It's it's a challenge to get sourced, I would say. I was lucky in the fact that I reached out to some great I've had some great people helping me along the way. I paid for some consulting calls actually from a lady out of um I can't remember what town it is in Iowa, but she does freezer meals and she's been doing it for five to almost a decade i think and so she was really helpful on sourcing materials and stuff and i ended up using the same um lady that she uses to source the liners and actually source the boxes um and those are the kind of the two main things um when, you, when you're sourcing that kind of stuff you realize and this is kind of the way it is across everything when you order more your price per unit goes down so when you're starting out and you're like oh well i only think i want to order 300 boxes or 300 liners well all that stuff is going to be way higher versus when you order a half truckload or a full truckload of something your price per unit's way down so having a warehouse definitely helps with storing that kind of stuff but uh it's out there you just got to go looking for it and ask ask the right questions but yeah new york city is where these come from so you have your boxes here is there any yeah. loose that are right here yeah there's these so these oh. are actually the Here's a, something that I didn't mention in the beginning when I had with troubles. So my first box, this is my first box that I used, and it's the same design as the ones we use now, but I actually got this from a website called Pacola. If you're ever gonna start shipping meat, don't use Pacola, because these boxes, the quality of them, they, I sent my first batch of orders out, and a lot of them, were in terrible shape when they ended up to the consumer's door and the reason was is just the the grade on them as far as the how good they are how how durable they are was not good and that's something that you know i didn't know crap about so we just use these boxes strictly for pickup orders these boxes over here that we got these are all the good boxes that are way more durable that don't break up anymore but Trial and error, you know? You don't know what you don't know until you start doing it. So we, we fixed that problem, thank God. We're gonna have to cut all that because this video is sponsored by Pacola. <laughs> so was, Damn it. Darn it, no, Damn. okay. Okay, so you have Farmer Grade. That's the yeah. name. How'd you come up with Farmer Grade? So Farmer Grade, I actually was gonna call it something else before, and it was gonna do, it was gonna be, I'm not gonna have to say the name, but it was gonna be something to do with just kind of what we're, we stand for. It was gonna be about transparency and you know, bringing meat that you can trust to your door, right? And when I got, I actually made the whole brand, had everything branded the way for that name. And then when you go to get a trademark, uh, definitely the way you think trademarks work, think again. You definitely want to look into trademarks and see and talk to a lawyer on that because it ended up being nobody had that name, but they had one of the words in my name in another product or they had a, that in another trademark and so even though it wasn't the same just them using that word uh, i couldn't use that name i couldn't trademark that name and so i had to change the whole brand and change the name and come up come up with a new brand name and so farmer grade just stuck you know it's kind of farmer grade approved coming from farmers we put this on our on our plate we feed our families with this meat you know and so kind of just made sense and that's that's how it, the name kind of originated but the whole branding and everything like that um i was lucky enough to find an amazing graphic designer that kind of we kind of worked together on coming up with the planning and uh of what the brand was going to look like visually and what the colors were going to be and all that stuff so uh that was i recommend that to anybody you know when you launch a brand nowadays <laughs> you want to make sure that you do do everything you can to make it look professional because I just feel like business is so competitive nowadays. You need a professional website. You need you need stuff to look and feel easy for the consumer. You know. So we're gonna actually bring in a, a 
an order here yeah. and start it out in which we'll go right back in there. What excites me about this is actually Sawyer's doing the same thing that I looked at is that it's like for younger farmers is that we got to have like a value add that we're bringing back to our farming operations. And we've done it now in two different ways. And it's cool because both of us have been able to show it actually on social media on how we're doing that. So the challenge is, is that farming's really pretty hard and we're getting into even harder times now is that how are we going to, as the next generation of farmers, make sure that we keep our farms afloat? And that is by having a value add or something that is tied in with our business. We went to the agritourism, he went direct to consumer. Mm -hmm. So we can actually kind of see both aspects of that. So, ready to start an order? Yep, we'll start an order. I will, I don't know if you guys really want to be in the freezer. I'll probably want to be one. Well, we'll start in here first. How about oh, yeah. that? We'll start in here first. He doesn't understand that I have an extra layer of insulation that I've been working on for 32 years. So first step, we'll get a box. And we head over here, because this is kind of the packing table. And I want to get that taped up for you guys. I do clear tape to start. It doesn't have to be perfect. kind of packing it like I normally would even though you guys are picking it up and taking it you know well Molly you can do you can just press this this button twice all the way down one more and then press the middle button to cut it perfect you can slap right on the middle there right here yep and then just ah! yep you're good you're good perfect yep perfect flip it over if you want to grab one of those liners over there and then another liner on that shelf that one? Yep. So it's a two piece liner. Good thing I'm tall. Yeah. <laughs> so this one goes in there first, kind of gets in that bottom of it, push down, make sure it's all secure. The biggest thing you want to do is just with the dry ice, especially, you just want to keep that box tight and insulated. And this liner really helps do that. And then this one, you kind of fold like that, go down, make sure it's, it's nice and snug. And there you're ready. You're kind of ready to go take it in the freezer and start filling it up with meat and dry ice. So that's what we're gonna do. So I had to get bundled up because it's awfully cold in there. But this is kind of where we store our liners and boxes when we're not putting them in the packing room. We try to fill that up as best we can. But like I said, order in bulk helps your cost per unit. So having some places to store some of that stuff definitely helps your cost per box. This is where, well, I'm actually leasing this, this whole building. So the owners actually lease part of it, or they use part of it, and I, I'm, out, I'm able to use one bay. So when we bring meat in, or the UPS truck comes in, this is where we'll load and unload, right here in this bay. And then on these, I don't know what you want to say, these, what do you call these things, bays? This this used to be a Swans building. Yeah. So if you're from Iowa, you know Swans. Yeah. Is, is Swans even still operating? So they actually are, they got, I think they got bought. Oh. They got bought and now they just do it. I think they have these facilities, but they only do them in really big cities where it made sense. Oh, okay. And they got rid of all their little yeah, ones. Because they got rid of Swans doesn't come around anymore. Yeah, now. and then I think they also, trans, they're moving their business to do more like ship it to the consumer's oh. door rather than have the old Schwann's truck go around the neighborhood. It's kind yeah. of what Schwann's, thinking. if you want to send me some orange push pops for that shout out right yeah. there. <laughs> My dad knows everything about Schwann's. Yeah. Grew up with that stuff, so. yeah, it feels like you used to eat Schwann's all the time. Yeah. So. so come on in here. This is our freezer. We don't, we're not quite to the point where we use this whole entire thing, but it's big enough for, for growth for sure. So we got our pork chops, we got our Italian sausage, we got all the bacon, we got our breakfast sausage, um, we have a little bit of ground beef left from Sunny Farms. We're going to be, we're actually selling that right now, we're about sold out on that. Um, but this is kind of where I load everything, so this is where the magic happens. You know, this is where we'll get the boxes in, I kind of have all my cuts laid out that I know that go into every kind of box type, so then I don't have to run around like a chicken with his head cut off finding cuts. And I'll just kind of pack everything here. This is the dry ice tote that we get shipped every week and trying to guesstimate how much dry ice you'll need every week. <sighs> Something that I probably need to get more efficient with, but it's really hard to tell when you don't have always the most consistent sales every time, every week. Um, but you, this is probably a five to, 500 to 700 pound um, tote. Tip for anybody that's doing this, 
Insulated blankets are your best friend when it comes to keeping dry ice together because it's not the, t the temperature that keeps that makes dry ice go away, it's the air. It dissipates when there's air. So keeping it nice and tight, even I even put cardboard in there, keeping it nice and tight allows your stuff to stay together. So I got this towed in last week and it's held up phenomenally well. Long road. So Sawyer, he uses the same king as us is that we're trying to use social media to promote the pumpkin patch a little bit. That's why Molly started the Patchy Later uh, YouTube channel. But he talks about his sales, you know, he might have a TikTok video that goes viral or something like that. And that's gotta like yeah. increase your sales. So it's yeah. not like he has uh, an every uh, day is really consistent. Do you do like a weekly subscription, a monthly subscription so or anything So right like now that? we don't do subscriptions. It's just kind of all a la carte. Uh -huh. We're actually working on getting it to the, we all have, we only have curated boxes right now. And that was just to make things simple in the beginning. But actually next month, we're hoping to make some changes on the website to allow people to build their own box. So that's coming. And then I think subscriptions will come next, but um, that will really give people, that was probably, I pulled our customers to see, you know, what what is something that you wanna see that we're not doing? Build your own box was like the number one request. So always listen to your customers and adapt, so. So we were talking before here and Sawyer was recently engaged, so I was congratulating yeah. on him. Well, sure. and, he's, and he's been starting to plan his wedding. I can tell you this, man, if you uh, happen to fill that full of ice, that, that, that can might be able to hold the one or two bush lattes for your, <laughs> for your wedding cool. party that, right that'd there. That'd be really good. So, I just keep these totes on hand. Just, oh, we don't know where one of the blue totes went. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> but, so, we'll do a... Uh, yeah, I'll open, this, I'll open this puppy up. Molly can send the box through. These things, these, I don't even know, these plastic things, I need to just cut them damn things off because they're just, they're annoying. So what we'll go ahead and do is we'll kind of just give you a mix of everything that I got. I'm low on beef supply right now because, you know, the farmers that we work with, they, they typically bring the beef, Sunny Farms. We're actually gonna be working with Peterson Family Farms this year, uh, Ranch in Sodak, uh, how farms work, it, we're talking with him, maybe we'll be doing something with him in 2025. So beef is coming, but it just takes a long time to grow an animal. So I'm also wholesaling some beef, hoping to get some more beef in here by next month, wholesale wise. Um, but Peterson is gonna be bringing us some cattle here in, in May. So we'll start pre-selling his box, probably March, April. So coming up pretty soon. So the Peterson boys, uh, Peterson Farm Bros, I believe is what yeah. they go by. Yeah. They're the singers. Uh, cattle grain farming operation yeah. out of Kansas. 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 Yeah. So I'll put a link to one of their deals. So maybe you said May's probably May. one of the beauty. I think May's the one we're looking at. So yeah. you might be able to uh, do some pre-sales at some point yeah. in time and order yourself uh, a box of beef from the singing boys. Yeah, <laughs> there you go. So, I mean, it's up to you, man. What do you, we got pork roast. Run us through, let's try it off. So we got pork roast, we got pork chops, we got smoked bacon, we got cottage bacon, which comes from the shoulder of the pig. Really good for like BLTs or like uh, bacon, egg and cheese sandwiches. It's like a thicker cut, um, tasty. Italian sausage, breakfast sausage. We got some ground beef from Sunday Farms. Let's package up some bacon and some pork chops. Yeah, we'll get some pork chops for you. So, uh, do you like do you like lean pork chops? Do you like a nice fat cap on them? Fat cap for me. Fat cap for you. All right, we'll find a good, we'll find a really good, good pair for you. Here's how the pork chops come. Yep. Right Chew there. Do you like do you like pork roast? Do you like crock pot? Do you like we do. Yes. Okay, we'll throw one pork roast. Throw in a pork roast, about two to four pounds. Throw in some cottage bacon for you. We'll throw in a good amount of that for you. Again, you can never have enough bacon. I can't mean, have enough bacon. Can't ever, can never have enough bacon. So, we'll throw in, we'll make sure you're well taken care of on the bacon side of things. Again, I got that extra layer of insulation. We're gonna be adding to it here in a minute. Get you some sausage. How about that for we you? We are loaded. You're loaded up. That's to the brim right there. So that is a pack. That'll of meat. do it. That'll do it. So now I'm gonna have to keep that away from the two dogs in the car. <laughs> <laughs> so now we'll put the dry ice in, and um, I think we'll just put in probably we'll put in probably five pounds for you because you're gonna be going home tonight. That'll get you. That'll get you far. 
I also throw in one of these because, listen to customers, people don't necessarily like the dry ice touching the meat, even though it's wrapped in this. So, oh, yeah. you know, listen to your customers. Just kind of throw that out there, throw this here, put that down. That's that, kind of a full that's, box. That's there. a full box. That's right a there. full box right there. Typically, they're not like that, but we'll make it work. And then it goes back through the so pass through. back through here. Molly can grab it. It's a little heavy. We filled her to the brim, so. Yep. You can just set that on that white packing table. So, like I said, this one's packed up pretty good, so it's gonna take some muscle. <laughs> but we'll, we'll we'll get her enough. To, you can you can tape about anything. You just get that tape off. Oh, that was bad. <laughs> I gotta take my gloves off. Enough tape to get you, get the job done for sure. We'll just get a nice. Nice and back for you. I promise they don't always look like this when they go out. It's just it's just a little full. We want to make sure you guys are taken care of. So gotta make your trip worth it, you know. You gotta have that farmer grade touch too. Gotta make sure you know where it came from. <laughs> that is a snazzy looking box. Looks like a Christmas present Christmas present, huh? Just need a bow. Bingo. There you go. That'll do her manure. So down in the description, I'll leave a link to Farmer's Graves' website. Grilling season's coming up. Meat's coming in. Yep. Get yourself ready to uh, have the grills fired up here before too long. We're going to have some brats and some hot dogs and some patties and some pork patties. All the seasonal summer grilling stuff, briskets, pork butts, it's all coming. So it'll be here soon. I brisket. promise. Yeah. <laughs> Can't go wrong with some brisket. Well, guys, we're going to go do a podcast, so I think that's where we'll end this one. Very cool to see another young farmer venturing out to bring that value add, add to their business, and we'll see you in the next one. Thank you, guys.